When the pandemic first came on, our team did some thinking behind, you know, what would the future look like? And I think you kind of got a little bit of a glimpse of that uh, this year at CES. What's up, everybody? First of all, just wanted to wish you all a happy new year. Happy 2021 from the Hatch Duo team. We're excited to be back with some new content. Like last year, we're going to be kicking off the year by going to CES. Obviously, because of the pandemic, CES is going all digital for the first time this year. So rather than vlogging the entire trip, we're just going to be doing a little Hatch Duo wrap up and talk about some of the innovations in tech that we saw at CES this year. Hope you guys enjoy. Hi, I'm April and I'm the VP of Business Development for Hatch Duo. So this is how we're gonna start. Um, I'm going to try to record each day a little bit by bit of the experience, what I'm having to do, how it's different from last year, and what the brand new user experience will be like for this year. Obviously, everything's digital. Everyone can tune in remotely. That'll definitely save the pain on your feet. <laughs> yeah, we'll just see how this goes. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about the user interface and how I'm working with it. My team and I have definitely discussed that it is most efficient to have multiple tabs pulled up um, just because the interface is not as um, advanced as, you know, clearly as we'd like it to be. So this is kind of the layout here. So usually I'll have two or three tabs open, one for the exhibit directory and then another one for the attendee directory so there are two different directories but anytime you do click on a contact it loses your spot in, in where you originally were working so um, you're kind of having to start over as far as the navigation of it um, so we felt that it was just best just to have multiple tabs open so that you don't lose your spot essentially, and you just keep working so that's a, a more seamless workflow. But yeah, once you get the hang of it, it's, it's pretty simple. Day two of um, CES 2021. Today's the first day where the exhibitor showcase and pages have opened up. So I'm getting ready to tackle it as best as I can one by one and kind of figure out how this goes. One difference is that as you visited um, other exhibitors and inquired about their products, their, their business, um, and their upcoming plans, essentially you would always you would always get an answer back. Last year's experience, you know, sometimes um, you'd either be fighting for the same physical space, a lot of different bodies to fight through. But essentially, I felt like exhibitors were more proactive about the questions and the inquiries that, that were coming their way. And it's a wrap! It is finally over. CES 2021 digital, first ever digital experience. Overall, it was good. Um, my team and I enjoyed a, a different pace, trends to look out for, a lot in, in cameras. Um, camera technologies are, are definitely improving. Drones, drones and robotics in general. Uh, the way that we're going to deliver products and services will be incorporated and integrated through robot products and, and drones. Um, we kind of have been seeing that, but I think we're going to be seeing it a lot more and more. A lot of smart, sustainable home products and even new ways of designing homes. Um, and that kind of ties back into new smart cars that are also coming out. AI, um, Mark Cuban, I think said it really well in his pre-session um, that kicked off for CES. He mentioned that, you know, as a business, if you haven't done so already, you really need to understand the fundamentals of AI or else likely you'll get left behind. And um, I, I really do believe that too. I personally noticed a lot of medical devices in the med tech space, um, evolving, integrating the, the newest technology, really focusing on 
making it uh, not only user friendly, but um, you know, incorporating, wanting to incorporate design for future usability. So yeah, we'll, we'll see and see you next year for 2022. See so yes. Hey everyone, this is John from Hatch Duo. Yeah, in terms of this year, I think it was very interesting that CS was dig all completely digital for the very first time. You know, I think it was great, first of all, that they, they did that. There are some, some things, uh, some trade-offs that happen uh, in a digital setting that you're not able to fully experience like when you're actually you know, physically there. One of them being, you know, the accidental product discovery. When you're walking the floor, I think just kind of going around walking the floor and actually seeing things with your own eyes picking things up with your hands i think you know covid19 has really changed the way um we can kind of experience these accidental discoveries and in some sense i think those are key things that like as a designer um and and as a design team we like to experience when we're, we're doing that so trade show versus like working remotely that's two different things but working remotely there's intention to it and uh when you're trying to go to a, a networking and kind of a, a trade show, you want to be able to kind of explore and experience. And the exploration, the accidental finds, um, that's kind of where I feel a virtual experience uh, may be a little bit lacking. Uh, I think it's very important for anyone working in tech or product development in particular, uh, especially with consumer electronics, to attend CES. And why I feel it's important, particularly for design firms, is so that you can kind of stay in the know about trends, innovations, uh, emerging technologies, things of that nature that may help with your product team to develop and innovate um, with the projects you may be working on or may be working on in the future. Also, I think it's very important to get a scope of the competitive landscape to see, you know, what are what are both companies, both large and small, put, placing their bets into? You know, where are emerging market opportunities in the consumer electronics space? And so that's why I think it's particularly very important for companies to be attending. For me, CES can can be a, a complete overwhelm if you're not careful. And uh, for the most part, you do see a lot of the same things year after year, the large companies doing screen solutions, whether it's like rolling screens, curved screens, things of that nature. Um, but if you can kind of look past all of that and, and start to dig a little bit deeper and seeing what people you know, in the product space are paying attention to, you might get some insights. And what I found was a lot of companies were seeing COVID-19 and the future of health and wellness as a space of opportunity. So we're seeing companies like Razer, which is traditionally like a gaming company, um, all of a sudden, you know, proposing a concept for a, you know, RGB mask, right? Like a, a respirator mask. Um, you're seeing a lot of different companies take uh, UV technology, which isn't new, um, but they're appropriating in such a way um, to foresee, you know, future pandemics, you know, UV lighting robots, utilizing voice AI uh, into technology so that we touch things less. When the pandemic first came on, our team did some thinking behind, you know, what would the future look like? And I think you kind of got a little bit of a glimpse of that uh, this year at CES with companies just saying, okay, like now that we understand that the pandemic um, could happen at any time in the future, what can we do with technology to appropriate it in such a way so that, you know, um, we're, we're living a little bit safer, whether it's through, you know, air purification, high touch surfaces, or even just masks. So I think that was pretty interesting for us, as well as just seeing the overall cool effects of, you know, concept cars, things of that nature. That's always fun to see and always kind of spurs the, the visual inspiration juices as well. But th that was kind of my main takeaway was that companies were taking, you know, a, a pretty challenging time that we're living in and, and seeing it as an opportunity to innovate. As the rest of the team mentioned, there was a lot of innovations in AI, specifically medical tech this year. And I'm just curious, what are you guys most excited for in the upcoming years? Let us know in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn notifications on for alerts on our next video. See you guys later.